Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Chick, and you know it. This is 100% the outdoors. And today's mission is to catch, clean, and cook a northern pike. In my opinion, one of the most underrated species out there. I love to fish for pike. I love to fish for big pike. We're hoping to target some bigger ones today, and of course, a shore lunch size fish. So we'll start throwing some cast, see what we can make happen, but let's do some pike fishing. Okay, let's start with a lure they don't make anymore, Savage Gear Hard Eel. Okay, let's get this further out here. Let's look further, and yeah. Live imaging isn't gonna be a huge factor today, maybe for finding some weeds, maybe seeing if I have some deeper follow, something like that. But other than that, it won't play a huge, huge factor in the pike fishing today. I don't think. But I have it running just in case. Okay, let's anchor right here. See, see I got lots of nice cabbage here. It's been the live imaging. Oh yeah, look at all the cabbage. So let's throw cast over here. This is definitely a bigger bait for a lunch size fish, but you will catch lunch size pike on a bait this big. You won't catch a pile of them, but you will catch some. Well, there's a lunch size pike, maybe even smaller. That one's not even big enough for lunch. Well, we're on the board anyway. There's a little guy. You can jump off. You can jump off. Nothing like trying to take off a small pike with big hooks. I got a bad sun angle here, but this actually ends up being a good lunch size fish. I'm thinking about 24 inches. I like 25 to maybe 27 ish. Uh, 27 inch will feed three people easily, but there's just one, one person today, me. Maybe I'll have some snacks for after or whatever, but this is gonna be the fish I'm gonna keep. Yeah, about a 25 incher, pretty good. I just watched a fish hammer me come out of those weeds in the live imaging. That was really cool. Really cool. <laughs> I looked down and I saw a fish streak straight up from those weeds and hit me. That was awesome. He just inhaled that bait. Oh boy. Well, a little bit bigger than my lunch size fish, like a 30 incher, maybe 31. Too big to keep to eat for sure, but too small to be a trophy. I say that's one cool thing with the live imaging though, is being able to cast at weeds. You find your weeds on there, you cast it. Obviously you do the same thing with side imaging or visual sometimes, but right now it's just, it's really smoky. So it's a little bit darker. It's harder to see the weeds at times. So the live imaging is helping to really pinpoint my cast. Oh, wow. Holy cow. That thing hit me with full speed. It just started taking drag instantly. I don't even know if it's big, but it must've just like absolutely wrecked that bait. It feels good. I wonder if it's snagged potentially too. Like, oh, it's, it's gotta be snagged for as quick as it went, not? I don't know. That was insane. Yeah, it's snagged. Oh, wow. I wondered about that. Whew. Almost ripped the rod right out of my hands. Nice fish. Just not big enough. Whew. That was crazy. Okay, we'll get you unhooked. And we'll not even show you off since we got you snagged by accident here. Got rocked right there. Switch to a blade for a bit it's kind of like an, an inline spinner but it's got three blades on it well it's one blade but it's got three oh, i'll explain it it's from musky munchies though decent fish decent fish not big not small just decent might actually put him in the net and show him off and like i said talk about the bait the bigger bait's been a bit slower so i switched to an inline spinner 
which is in my opinion one of the must-haves for pike yeah nice fish i'm gonna put this one in the net right here oh yeah just get stuck everywhere clayton smart oh boy yeah that's how you rim a fish right there too oh, fish a little bit bigger than i thought actually <laughs> a little bit bigger than i thought okay i'll give my quick measure just to see but i'm thinking like 37 ish oh, a little bit bigger 38 i kind of underestimated that one i thought it was uh, a lot smaller than that it's a beautiful 38 inch pike <laughs> whoops so like i said i switched to an inline spinner this was talking about the three blades here and it's got two uh little clankers here so when it turns in the water it actually makes a pile of noise against those clankers as well Let's see if i get spinning Clink, 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 clink. It's like that. So it makes a pile of noise like that too. This guy, Musky Munchies, I've, I don't know his name. He sent me a couple baits like two years ago. And I just never got around to making a video with him. But I, looking into him, like the more I looked at him, he pays really close attention to the detail. He epoxies the treble hook in the back here. So your line doesn't get stuck over. Your leader doesn't get stuck in there. That's brilliant. And they also painted his lead weight in here orange as well, right? And he's got orange, uh, like a rubber, uh, whatever that is. Uh, when you heat it up, heat shrink. <laughs> oh, Clayton. So the heat shrink on the tube there keeps this keeps that hook running straight behind the, the bait and not kind of hanging downwards. But this is a smaller version here. I asked him to tie me up one for, for pike fishing. I've got some larger ones. He actually did a custom cso one here too or a c this is this is just a regular blade but he makes a bunch of different things he makes them the bigger ones for musky fishing and he'll do some smaller ones for pike fishing as well but like i said a little bit slower with the bigger bait i'll grab that and show you what i was using as well bait that's not uh even made anymore i don't think but an inline spinner definitely uh a good one to have for pike fishing. I used to use a lot of the Booker tails, the 500 series, sometimes the 700 series, but I like these just how, how easy this blade always spins. You can slow roll them and this blade's constantly spinning. Really impressed with that so far. This is the bait that I started with here, a Savage Gear Hard Eel. As you can tell, a much bigger bait, looking for that bigger bite, bigger fish, but sometimes even the bigger fish, if they're not into it, downsizing, will help you out to catch those bigger fish. You can tell I went through this whole little weed bed with this bait and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try going through this weed bed one more time with the inline spinner. It didn't take long to connect with that fish. So much bigger bait compared to the other one that I'm using. I don't think they make these anymore. I think if you do some hunting, you can find them in Europe, but it's been a pretty good bait for me so far as well. Little guy, well, next cast. Look at that spinner catches them all, big and small. Oh, I thought that was a weed at first. I'm just popping it off. I don't know if it was a weed then turned into a fish, but went to go pop it. He kind of surprised me. Just a little guy. Oh boy. <laughs> that thing just come up right behind it. Match the speed and ate it again. I thought it might've been weeds for a second. Not a bad fish at all either. Not bad. Well. Got rid of the big bait, went to the spinner, and it's working. Big time, nice fish, nice fish. Like I said, not big, but also not small. Well, another quality fish, about a 35 incher probably, so good. See ya. <laughs> that was cool when it ate i didn't set the hook either i just kind of waited till it turned and then went to its tail you have to be so careful with that if you just like that was a real big one you could easily have just pulled the hook right out of the fish's mouth very cool and it's a nice fish but it's still not quite what we're after real thick like 33 incher awesome See ya.
Oh, little guy. When they're head shaky, it means they're little. You want a hook set and just feel weight and maybe like one nice thump. When you feel thump, thump, that's the little guy. They are wrecking this spinner bait though, clobbering it. Nice. Well, we've caught some fish, nothing crazy. 38 incher, a couple eater size, maybe a couple bigger than eating, a couple smaller than eating. I think I'm going to head to a shore lunch spot here, area somewhere, find some kind of flat rock, maybe a beach, something like that, pull the boat up. We're gonna clean the fish, cook it up, enjoy some fresh northern pike and then maybe continue on for a little bit of fishing and try to get a, a big one yet. But this video is literally just, uh, like I said, a catch, clean, cook. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the pike fishing in general. I am fishing weeds today, anywhere between five to 10 feet and nice cabbage bed. Yeah, what a life. So I found this little beach here and it's actually got a table on it and a picnic table and a little fire pit. So we are going to make use of this. I got a seagull here that's patiently waiting for shore lunch. He's not getting much because I'm pretty hungry. I'm not gonna lie. I do have some thunderstorms in the area. So I'm gonna try to do this step by step. I'll clean the fish first then I'll kind of see what the thunderstorms are gonna do. Normally now I'd even like light my fire already and get some good coals going and all that while I'm cleaning my fish. But right now, because of the thunderstorms, we're just gonna go step by step. I'll try to do my best to show this off with uh, how, I, how I clean a fish. I like to leave the rib bones on the fish and kind of like take the meat off of the rib bones and end up with this called um, a butterfly method. And then we take the Y bones out after that. So first, first things first, we will get the butterfly uh, area or the butterfly method here going. Can't talk right now. I'm trying, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Clayton, use your big boy words. Let's do this. Okay, so I got the head camera going as well as this camera. I'm gonna to try to kind of cut with a little bit, but the first thing I'm gonna do is come, I'm gonna cut right here, tight to this uh, flap here, his gill plate, and then I'm gonna come halfway. And I'm only going about this far in with the knife probably, uh, just cause I wanna leave the rib bone on there. And it's just so I can like skin that whole meat off of the rib bone. So do this side first, and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. This isn't gonna work that great with the camera, I don't think, but we'll try. So down here, and then what I like to do here is actually cut up and out a little bit, not this way, you're not sawing the skin, you're kind of cutting underneath the skin coming upwards. And just use the tip of your knife right here, come all the way down. And then when you get to this top fin right here, you can come all the way through to this anal fin right here. So through there, and then I'm angling my knife just slightly downwards like this, slightly, I'm trying to go on the camera here, slightly downwards like this, just keep taking off all that meat off of that bone, off of the backbone vertebrae, I guess you could call it there. Okay, so I come right through the tail there. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just skinning the meat off of the fish. I do my walleye like this, I do my lake trout like this. If you don't cut through the rib bone, with your knife, your knife will stay sharper longer. So just keep going along here, just keeping, just kind of keep, like I said, keeping that rib bone here. So this is all, all this is meat all gone. There's like slightly tiny, tiny there, but you would, you'd end up leaving that much even when you'd leave the rib bone on here and take it off. So just like that. And then what I do is just give it a little slice there a little slice here and I keep it connected still, flip it over to keep it level this way. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other side now. Like I said, this is called the butterfly method. Like I said, the biggest thing with this is you're going to keep your knife sharper, longer. So that slit I made before, now that's already off here. 
little slit there, done. I'll give this piece right here to that seagull. Keep them out of, keep them out of my other lunch. So the nicest thing with this butterfly method is if you're in the back of your boat, especially if you're guiding and you're cleaning your pike as you're fishing, and all of a sudden your client gets a big fish on, you gotta stop cleaning, you can grab your filet, throw it in your back tray, and then grab and continue later. It's all just easy. Plus if it's slippery too, you got something to hold on to. So the Y bone, this is where most people struggle with pike. So if you look, let's see if we can get a close up here at the camera. If you look right here, right there, there is a bone that goes in and down. It goes in and around like this, it's called a Y bone. So your objective is to cut on top of this bone and below this bone. Some people, this is where they'll end up wasting a lot of meat and they'll just take in a chunk like this and it just doesn't work as good as this. We call it the, the four cut method. It's what I was taught when I first started guiding and that's what I try to teach new guides as well. So right along the top of this, the Y bone, you see this white, I don't know if you show up on the, on the video, but there's white, white dots right here. That's the, the edges of the Y bone. So I'm cutting right on the top of it. Not too, not too heavy, because you want to cut through the bone. And you just hear a click, 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 click. You can hear it all the way down there to there. And then I'm cutting like this right on top of the bone. I'm staying nice and tight and going like this and in kind of. Just so I get to the edge of it. And you can use your finger and you can go like this. If I was doing this rush, I'll go literally, I'll go, I'll go one, two, just a slight cut here, three and four. So here, all I'm doing right now is just getting myself a little edge. I'm not cutting down very far. And now I'm gonna go underneath that bone right here. And I'm kind of cutting up, not going obviously through that, that Y bone, but you're just cutting around uh, along it. I, I do this, I demonstrate it better than I talk about how to do it, that's for, how, I, how to do it, that's for sure. So right there, as you can see, this is, this is the Y bone here. And again, if I was doing this really fast, if I was guiding, I needed to get it done, I would just go zip, 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 four cuts. But since I'm trying to show it off here and make it really nice and pretty looking, we'll do it a little bit slower. And that right there is the Y bone right there. Bone, no good. Same thing on the other side now, except for you're cutting towards yourself. So we cut on the top of it. One more just to make sure. And just feel that click, click, click. And then cut down on top of the bone. I find it better to cut this way with the Y bone because that's kind of the way it flows than it is to cut, say, against it. You always want to pull your knife. You never want to push your knife. You're pulling your knife. A, a good friend of mine says, people aren't bad at cleaning a fish, filleting a fish. They're just bad with a knife. You need to learn how to use a knife before you can clean a fish. And, and he's right. Now, yes, yeah, so if you were to just slab your fish off of the, the pike, normal, you still have a rib bone here that you'd have to take, out, take off the rib bone too, but obviously these pieces wouldn't be connected. So now is where you'll actually disconnect the fish. You have your anal, your, not your anal fin, your pictorial fins right here, I think they are. And then the butthole here. So I'm gonna cut here. This is where it's bad on my knife right now. This, I don't like cutting down into this. Sorry, Doug. Doug sent me this beautiful knife years ago. Doug Barsh, got it with him. He makes custom knives. I get it sharpened once a year at, uh, at Cameron Tate, Razor's Edge in Winnipeg, but I'm probably going to dull it right now, cutting down this wood like this. That's a huge, huge no-no. But we're going to uh, just make it here. We'll just, we'll improvise a little bit. We'll pull it up and we'll do this. So there's one piece. Obviously we still have to debark it. And now the other piece here, we'll do the same thing. We'll just improvise a bit, go like this and there. So that is what's called the belly meat and the Y bones. And we'll throw that to our seagull friend as well. So the last thing we have to do now is debark the fish. I like to get as close as I can here, cut down. You're kind of pushing your knife down and kind of like just pulling the skin. All I'm doing, I'm grabbing the skin, I'm kind of pulling it, a rocking motion. I'm not really moving the knife much at all. Grabbing here and just sliding it back and forth. Now I'm gonna show you something kind of cool or what I do if you ever cut through the skin. We're gonna, we're gonna purposely 
wreck this one, this fillet right now. Okay. So I cut, cut here, I'm starting, oh, starting. Everything's going relatively good. All of a sudden, oh, I just cut into my skin. Don't flip your fillet over. So there's a little bit of fin there. Don't flip your fillet over and try to start again. It'll never happen. Go like this. So you know what? Okay. This is going to be one of our pieces of fish here that we're going to cook. So I'm going to come here, start and go normal. So that's a fish. That's a piece that you're actually going to end up cooking. Then you take it here, flip it around and restart. That's my best, my best tip I can give you if you ever cut through the bark, the skin, is just to find something later on and restart. Don't try to keep going there. Just say, okay, there's a piece and be done with it. So there's our, our boneless fillets. This is a 25 incher. This would easily feed three people. I'm going to probably easily eat one of these half of it and keep the other half for a snack later in the boat because we have a full day of fishing ahead of us yet. So this is what's on the menu today. Of course, the fish that we caught, I'm going to put a little bit of Frank's Red Hot as a binder, use the original Catch and Cook Crunchy today and French fries. And for a seasoning, we're gonna use Citrus Kick, which is a lemon pepper. I've been notified that Catch and Cook is now available almost everywhere in the States. Like you can find it, I think Jay said, in like 28 different shields. Um, I'm not sure if they're shipping online or anything like that. I'll put a thing here that I'll say, yes, they're shipping online or no, they're not into the States. I know you can get them from Shields. There's uh, Thorn Brothers, I believe. And if you contact Catch and Cook themselves, send them an email where they can get it in the States. You can uh, obviously order it. I don't know if my, my code will work in the States or I don't I guess I don't have a code, but I have a link below that gives myself a little bit of kickback if you're in Canada and you order it from that link, which is directly from the site. But it, it doesn't matter. I don't need the kickback. Jay's a good friend. Jay and Josh are really good friends and they make a good product and I enjoy helping my, my two buddies out. So don't feel like you have to click on the link. Go buy it at uh, a retailer. It's in Cabela's. It's at Pokey's. It's in Lake of the Woods Sports headquarters, I think. You can find it at lots of different uh, fishing fishing stores. So I'm going to get my pan on there. I've got my fire. It's a little bit too big. I'm going to get my pan on there and put the oil in it and then get my fries going. And uh, yeah, cook up some fish and fries. I'm using canola oil to fry the, the, the fries and the fish in. If you want really, really good fish, I definitely recommend like a lard, but canola oil is just obviously a little bit better for you. Is it healthy? No, probably not at all, but it's better than say lard is. And something I've been actually doing lots lately is I've been putting my fries in the oil cold. I have found the key to good, good cooked French fries is really slow cooked. I always used to heat the oil up to like whatever it is, 375 and put them in, but slow cooked French fries will be a lot better for you. Not better for you, better tasting. Worse for you, better tasting. So put that on there as the oil heats up. I'll stir it a little bit. It gets too hot, I'll pull it off, but we're gonna do a slow cook on those French fries. While those fries are going, I'm gonna take just a little bit of Frank's here and dump it in. You don't need too much. If you put too much, it's going to get really goopy. You just put in just, just a splash in there, just to coat all of the fish, to give, your, give yourself a binder. Frank's makes an excellent, excellent binder. It's not spicy at all. It has maybe a little bit of taste by the time it, it's done cooking, but it's not spicy at all. And then don't put your batter into your fish until you're ready to put it into the oil. That's the biggest thing I can, I can give you for advice. Stir it up. Break apart my potatoes that might have stuck together. And then right away, I'm gonna pull the pan off here in a little bit as well. Let it, let it cool a bit. Like I say, slow cooked. And look at this, my fries are cooking. I've got wild blueberries right here. How about that? Okay. The French fries are finished. We'll scoop them out, put them on the tin foil, and season them up.
Always cook your fries before your fish because your oil will stay cleaner with fries. Once you put flour in that oil, it starts to get dirty. A little bit of citrus kick here. Definitely recommend putting on the seasoning when the fries are still warm. It'll stick better. And then you could always shake it up a little bit too. Lemon pepper is so good on French fries. Okay, we'll coat up the fish. Probably only need about half of this bag, maybe a little bit more there. Seal it up, give it a good mix around. You wanna put more seasoning than less because if you don't have enough, it doesn't coat the fish good and it ends up being really sticky. If you have enough seasoning, it'll coat and everything will still be dry and you won't have a goopy, goopy mess. Perfect. We'll see if our oil is still hot enough. Shake it off before you put it in too. And we'll get that back on there. Could use a little bit of heat. Like I said, shake those pieces off before you put them in there. I cut a little bit too big of pieces here. If you want your fish to go a little bit longer too, cut the pieces a bit smaller but I'm not looking for a lot of batter today. I just want some good old pike. Pike are my favorite fish to eat. I could do this all in one pan, but I'm gonna do two pans. The less fish you put in there, the crispier it's gonna get for you as well. Try not to touch your fish too much when you're cooking it. If anything, just shake your oil around like this. If you have a piece that you have to flip, like those two right there, I might have to flip. It's not a big deal, but the less you can touch the fish, the better your batter coating is always gonna stay on. First batch of fish is ready. Oh yeah. And there we have it. Fries, fish, my plate, citrus kick, my boat. I feel like I should sit on this side but I actually want to put the camera down and chat with you guys as I'm eating. Oh, and I have some sweet chili sauce, but I think I'm just gonna eat the fish without the sweet chili sauce just cause it's gonna be so good. Let's give you guys the good view here. I don't mean me, I mean the background. And I gotta get rid of this too. Head camera is great for capturing footage, but it is so heavy on your neck by the end of the day. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna, have a couple pieces of fish here and uh, not give you a taste test because I already know it's going to be good because pike is my favorite but more so I just want to say thank you to everybody um, we just recently hit 90,000 subscribers I think I'll probably have a few videos out before this one they're actually hit 90,000 but it uh, it happened just uh, the other day so thank you so much to everybody. I appreciate it so much. I never thought when this channel started, it would be where it is. I honestly just started for fun more than anything for my parents to watch. Um, pretty deep issue into that, but that's it for another video, but it's for my, my parents, um, especially my dad, Mom and Clayton. We'll get into it another time. I'm not going to get all emotional now, but I do have to cover that subject at some point because people have asked recently how he's doing and stuff. And uh, yeah. So anyways, Pike. Crunchy. Hot. And good. Doesn't get any fresher than this at all. But seriously, thank you guys. From the bottom of my heart. Um, I haven't put out a pile of videos this summer. I've still been doing just a tiny bit of, of guiding on the side as well at the lodge I've worked at for a lot of years. And uh, I'm starting to cut back more and more on that. And I don't know what next summer is gonna bring yet at all with that, whether I'm going to um, do this full time or whether I'm going to still guide a couple of groups. I'm still leading towards guiding a couple of groups. It's really hard to say goodbye to something you've been doing for 20 years. And uh, a lot of clients that I really like. So, so many stories. There's so many stories. Maybe that's what this channel is going to be one time. It's like story time with Clayton. Oh boy, the stories. Thank you, everybody. I mean it. it means a lot.
And uh, I thought I was gonna maybe go out and fish more for this video, but I think I'm going to end it right here because this, what this video is all about was just to go catch a pike and cook it up. And uh, more so just get back to mother nature and just sit and think and enjoy. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget, get outside. <laughs>